This simple weight loss system helped me lose 65 pounds in about six months in my early 20s. And in today's video, I wanna walk you through the entire system so that you can repeat it except without the key mistakes that I made early on in my career that led to a lot of heartache, a lot of stress, and a lot of ups and downs with my weight. Now I've mastered the game 15 plus years later, and I wanna share some of this mastery with you. What's up guys, Josiah Novak from thetruetransformation.com. And uh, whether you're watching here on the channel or you're listening on the podcast, first of all, glad you're here. If you're first timer, appreciate you tuning in. I run a company called thetruetransformation.com. We've been in business for almost 12 years now, but I've been a personal trainer for almost 20 years, started in 2004. And uh, I've done a thing or two in the game, not to brag, but I've helped a lot of people, thousands of guys in our coaching program, our products, our podcast, our email list. I think it's well over 40,000 people now that have come through our system. But at the end of the day, my goal is really simple. I wanna help you master fitness, but in the process, get your health mentally, physically, spiritually 100% dialed in so you can go out and do the things that you were called to do on a spiritual, mental, physical level. And at the end of the day, maybe I'll be a partner in that journey with you and help you write some of your story. And uh, this channel and podcast is built for true transformation. So anyway, back to the story, 65 pounds overweight was where I found myself in my early 20s. Keep in mind up to this point, I had never seen my abs, right? I'd never been ripped or fit or what you would call elite when it comes to fitness. I was a, a guy who was really good at sports, but physically I really wasn't that impressive. In fact, I always had insecurity around my body from the acne that I dealt with at a really crazy level when I was in my teenage years to seeing guys on the, on the sports fields that I played on who were ripped, muscular, and just going like, how the heck do these guys look like that, right? Funny enough, I look back to those days sometimes and I realize a lot of those guys worked out like religiously. They were really big into lifting weights and uh, really active. Me, on the other hand, um, I got into lifting weights um, closer to my last year in high school. And um, lifting weights for me was uh, always about getting big, right? I was never worried about getting ripped. Even though I saw those physiques, I never in my head went like, oh, that's for me. I just looked at guys who were really muscular, had a lot of size, and I was like, I wanna be big. So I ate a ton of food, I lifted weights like a crazy person, and I started steadily gaining weight year after year after year until I got to my early 20s and I realized, oh my gosh, like I've allowed food to become a really negative part of my life. I started to rely on food to get over depression, to get over stress, to get over anxiety and to deal with relationship problems. And I was a big eater, always had a big appetite. And I found myself at 245 pounds when I was in my early 20s. And the only reason I know that I was 65 pounds overweight is I ended up losing 65 pounds, getting down to below 10% body fat, being super ripped. But it took 65 pounds of weight loss to get there. So there was a lot of lessons I learned early on, right? And the biggest one that I can tell you uh, right out of the gate is your mental health is always going to be the driving force behind whether or not you keep your results. So if you're mentally not where you need to be, if you're abusing your body, right, which I did early on, you know, I did bodybuilding competitions to get in shape because I thought, man, the harder I do things, the more stressful things are, the more I put myself through the ringer, uh, the better my results are gonna be. Not mentally the right way to approach things, right? Fitness doesn't have to be torture, doesn't have to be excruciating. You know, I see guys, for example, not to knock 75 hard, because I know it's, it's supposed to be a mental challenge. It's supposed to be really like a way to get uncomfortable when you're too comfortable. 75 hard is being used as a fitness program for most guys, and they feel like they gotta put themselves through the ringer. That's the only way they're gonna do it, right? If they work out twice a day, if they never cheat on their diet, they drink a gallon of water, you know, they work out outside for 45 minutes once a day, even if it's raining and if it's snowing, like they have to be rocky. That's the only way they're gonna get in shape, right? And there's a lot to unpack there because most times guys are just used to abuse. So they abuse themselves because that's what they're used to, right? And they go, that's the only way forward is to be hardcore and beat myself up. Anyway, that's not necessarily the most mentally healthy way to approach things. Instead, approaching it from a place of enjoyment, a place of leveling up your standards, right? So it's like, think about this. You know, we don't knock standards when it comes to the things that we enjoy uh, when it comes to travel, okay? Let's say a car, for example. Nobody's sitting here going like, oh yeah, I'd rather drive around a Hoopty versus, you know, an S550 Mercedes. An S550 Mercedes is always gonna be a smoother, 
classier, more enjoyable ride. And no one's like knocking that, right? They're like, yeah, that's awesome. Like that, that would be fun. Nobody's like, no, I have to pedal a tricycle for 50 miles. That's the only way, right? That's the best way. No, like people are looking for comfort. Same with first class. You know, if you fly first class and you have like the nice reclining sleeping chairs and all that stuff, that's amazing, right? And it's expensive, but it's amazing. Nobody's knocking that. Everybody wants that like high level of service, that high enjoyment, right? So why do we shy away from enjoyment when it comes to our fitness? Like, why are we against the first class route to getting results? Well, it's because we, once again, we just don't think we deserve it, right? We think, oh man, like I've been so bad to my body that the only way to get past that is to beat myself up. So that's the first lesson, right? And it's, it's important to know this because the way you get in shape will dictate whether or not you can keep the results, right? This is why I'm all about simple systems. I'm all about easy. The easier you get in shape, the easier it's gonna be to maintain it, right? And of course, getting in shape is gonna impact, if you do it the right way, it's gonna impact your spiritual health, your mental health, your physical health. It's gonna impact the health of your relationships. It's gonna impact the health of the, you know, the time you spend with the people you care about. It's gonna impact the health of your business. It's all related, okay? So the easier and more enjoyable we do things, well, look, the, the faster you're going to get to a place where you can maintain that level of fitness and you can live fit for the rest of your life. You can become the person who just does it because it's a great thing. All right. So how do we get there? Like, what are the steps, right, to take to actually achieve that? What is the system? Well, for me, when I started, man, I was doing things all wrong. I was working out twice a day. I was eating six meals a day, tiny little meals that added up to like almost no calories, made me super hungry all the time. I was eating chicken, rice, and broccoli around the clock. I was eating tilapia, I was eating oatmeal and egg whites, just like the worst, like never enjoyed it, hated every second of it, and I tortured myself. And so what that led to was a binge eating problem. You know, So I would stick to my diet six days a week, and then on the seventh day at night, I would binge on pizza. And this routine went on over and over and over again for months, and all, all actually years, I started to do this for years. And um, it wasn't until I was very fortunate and blessed enough to get around mentors that showed me a better way, right? It said, hey, look, you don't have to eat all the stuff you hate to get in shape. You can actually eat meals that you enjoy. Yes, you gotta stick to healthier foods. But if you just dial in your calories, if you just dial in your protein, the fat and the carbs, like they kind of take care of themselves and you will lose body fat, and you'll be able to look forward to meals. So I'll never forget, the, the first time I ever lost weight eating the way I enjoyed, it was like heaven had opened up its gates. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like science is actually real. You know, oh my gosh, calories do exist. This is amazing. I don't have to stick to the same boring meals over and over again. So I'll never forget the meals that I ate during that stretch. It was breakfast burritos that I would make at home. Like, they were so good. With real eggs, it wasn't egg whites, I actually got to eat eggs. Uh, protein pancakes. And then I would make these sandwiches, these club sandwiches for lunch, right? With a bunch of turkey meat, bacon, lettuce, tomato, even mayonnaise on bread. I mean, I couldn't believe I was eating bread and losing weight. But the whole lesson here is that I was looking forward to my meals. I was hitting the calories I needed to hit. I never tracked calories after a couple weeks. I, I got these meals that I just loved and I knew the quantities and I would just eyeball it. And the only time I would go back to tracking was when weight loss would slow down, right? I'd be like, okay, okay, let me just double check. Let me make sure I'm eating the right amount of food. Let me just track for a couple of days. And it became this beautiful system where I was losing a couple pounds a week, you know, just flawlessly, religiously over and over because I was hitting the same foods that I enjoyed all the time calories, protein. The other part of this was the training and the cardio. When I first started losing weight, I thought I had to go to the gym, lift weights for an hour, hour and a half sometimes. I mean, some of these marathon workouts were just obscene. You know, I'd limp out of the gym. That's how much volume I was doing. And I was hurting myself, man. I had tendonitis. My knees were hurting. My back was hurting. Even though my physique, yes, was changing, I hated it. I hated the training. I hated every second of it. And I thought I was like Muhammad Ali, right? Where he said, you know, I hated every minute of training and, you know, but, but I did it and I, whatever the quote is, I'm totally jacking it up, but it was like, I hated every minute of suffering, but it was worth the, the victory in the end, right? Like that's who I thought I was, but it didn't have to be like that. Here's what changed the game for me when I had kids, right? And all of a sudden I had my career, 
I was starting a business or I was growing a business while working, had my kids, had a wife who wanted to spend time with me, and my time became limited. I went from having you know 90 minutes a day to work out to having you know 30 to 45 minutes three or four times a week. Plus my sleep was jacked up, so like I just didn't have the energy. So I had to get real meticulous with what was worth my time and what wasn't. So I cut out all the fluff and I just focused on the basics. And what do you know? I got in the best shape of my life. Like the best shape I've ever been in is right now, I would say right now, but that's after being a father for almost 10 years. That's after being married for 12 years. Like that's after having a social life and a business to run and employees to make sure they're okay. And like all this stuff, the responsibilities of the world on your shoulders, I'm in the best shape of my life because I have a system that makes sense for my training, which is four days a week, push, pull, legs, full body. That's typically what I do. Push, pull, legs, full body, four days a week. Now I mix that up. Sometimes I go after challenges like high rocks or a Spartan race or a marathon or whatever, but the foundation remains the same. <coughs> Ooh, had to sneeze. <laughs> so, but my training foundation remains the same. I don't have to go do the 90 minute workouts the 400 sets for chest, like those days are done and I'll never go back because I know what works and that is keeping the basics, the basics and the, and the focus and getting stronger on those movements over time. That's all I worry about, right? But then there's the other side, like what do you do outside the gym? Cause you can't be in the gym for 24 hours a day. And that for me is the movement pillar, which I think is the easiest one, but movement is where we really see the progress mentally more than anything else. I noticed, and maybe you're the same way, that when I sit around too much, when I'm way too sedentary, I just don't feel good. So I make it a habit to hit a step goal every single day. Now that step goal will be different for everybody. For me, it's somewhere between 10 and 12,000 steps a day. That might be 8,000 steps for you, that might be 20,000 steps. It just depends on your goal, depends on how much you need to get the results that you want. But movement does so much for me, it keeps my energy up, keeps my mental health in check, allows me time for myself, Right, where I just need to like re, you know, decompress a little bit, reset, and come back and actually be clear. It also prevents a lot of arguments for me. Like going for a walk, man. Before I lose my shit and flip off, you know, the handles or whatever, and go crazy, I go for a walk. And I'll tell you, a walk does a wondrous thing when it comes to resetting you and bringing your anger down, bringing your patience level up, and going, okay, I don't need to like lose my cool here. I can handle this like a, like a professional, like a mature person. So many benefits to walking. Not to mention, it's an excuse to spend time with your significant other, right? Like you can't make it to date night because you have kids and like life and all this stuff. Cool, go for a walk. Take each other for a walk. Like, hey, I'm gonna go, let's go walk around the block for 30 minutes. You'd be amazed at how much that can do for your relationship. Not to mention, you're burning so much more calories than you would be by sitting around. So walking, my movement pillar, is part of the system that has absolutely changed the game. So if you're watching this and you're like, well, where do I start, man? This sounds great, like I want this system. Well, we have a free guide, it's called our 3M Action Plan. You can check it out in the link below. It'll at least get you on the right path. And at the end of the day, if you're dead serious about making a permanent change and you're like, dude, I want it. Like, I want the holistic approach. I wanna to be to like total optimization. I need to get my mental health dialed in. I need a better community. I need a team of winners around me, building me up, taking me to the next level. Well, that's where our True Transformation VIP system comes into play. You can check that out too. The links are below. But listen, if all you do is you take this video and you run with it and you apply it and you start taking action, that makes everything worth it, right? Go do that. Like that's the first step. Take action on these things. And I'll tell you this, if there's things that you disagree with or things you agree with or things that I missed, things you would add to the discussion, leave a comment. At the very least, like the video, subscribe to the channel, let me know if this was helpful, and uh, we'll be sure to make more just like this for you. If you're listening on the podcast, first of all, thank you so much. Subscribe to the show, and uh, I look forward to continuing to serve you guys in a big way moving forward, making fitness sustainable, permanent, making it the pillar in your life that we all need. We all need better mental, physical, spiritual health. So at the end of the day, that's all I got for you today. Life moves fast. Make it count. I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace.